CBC classrooms. Quite a number of counties are at 100%, and uh, uh, I have officers across uh, the nation, like I said, uh, Dr. Sarah Ruto is still in Mombasa. From there, she will go to El Geo Marquet, where we still have a hiccup. Uh, we are at 85% plus, which means we are, we are, we are working against uh, time for 15%. Uh, most of the uncompleted classrooms are at uh, roofing or walling level. So we are quite confident that we shall complete. We are focused mainly in the coast region and western region together with Nairobi. All the others are self-propelling. Uh, the Rift Valley is quite large. There are uh, some counties there like Nandi that are doing extremely well. There are also others that are struggling, like uh, Geo Marquette, and uh, we, we are sure that we shall be able to, to reach our targets. But my message this morning was about uh, a few teachers who are still sending children home. It really leaves a bitter taste in the mouth. There's a child who has been sent away from uh, a school in Nairobi. We looked for the principal the whole of yesterday. We have looked for the principal today. And the child has only gone back to school today. I am saying this as a, a parent and grandparent myself. If somebody is struggling and has paid all the fees for the year, and only has a balance of 30,000 shillings. And the, the sister is assuring you that she will continue to pay as we move along. And you feel compelled that the child must go home. Then again, I'm trying not to use very strong words, but I think uh, even in my slight words, I would say that that is not, uh, is not proper. It is not human. We have got a lot of challenges. We are going to, to miss a day on Monday. Who knows whether we shall, meet other, uh, we, sh we shall miss other days. I think we shall take it very seriously as a criminal offence. If, as we have directed you to look for the parents, instead you are sending the children home. It is, it is really bad and sad to do so. And I don't know what happened. But having said so, I want to thank uh, the greater majority of our uh, the teachers, the principals and, uh, and head teachers who have got, gone into some kind of working relationships with those children that are uh, struggling. Those uh, destitute children that got into a Lemo scholarship, I, I have been advised that now the money has started uh, going to schools. They must also not be removed from schools because uh, that scholarship is going to go on for the next four years. It's a large number. We are now talking of 27,000 children across the nation. And I also want to thank the school managers for ensuring that they are there and uh, doing everything possible. Everybody seems to be worried that, oh, we should extend time and what have you. In my assessment, I have noticed that a large number of schools have already completed the syllabus and all that they need to do as they revise is to apply what they are, to apply the knowledge that they are revising, so that you don't just go through the syllabus again like a machine. And I think all, all will be well. Those who are so afraid that the time is going to be short, I think uh, we wait and cross the bridge when we get there. Now, if somebody has a question that is appertaining to what I have said, say so. But if it is not appertaining, can we just accept that we are friends and we move on to the next? <laughs> so, yes, uh, appertaining to what we have said. Yes, yes, yes. yes? Uh, you've given us the, so far the progress in CBC classrooms in public schools. But we know private schools have given the undertaking that they will build up to about 5,000 classrooms. So what is the status and... Uh, the last time we spoke to some of them, they said uh, the issue of putting up a uh, laboratory could be challenging most of them because people they had a plan just to put up classrooms. So what is the situation so far? That is now water under the bridge. Our colleagues in the private sector have done extremely well. First of all, you start with uh, you start with uh, 
the urban areas, Nairobi being one of them. We have now got close to 150 uh, primary schools that have constructed laboratories that we accept as a standard. And I think, uh, uh, like I said, the government is not stopping by us moving on. Where we are standing from, I can now tell you, unless the parents choose otherwise, that the majority, the great majority of the children who are in private schools and their parents want them to remain in uh, those private schools for junior secondary school will be able to do so. Because we have given out a standard laboratory that has been done. And uh, uh, some of them have done laboratories out of this world. Uh, you can also overdo it. Some of them have overdone it. But uh, I don't think it's no, longer, it's no longer an issue. They might actually surpass the original target that we gave them. The small matter would be that when you take your child there, then you have to pay for it because it is voluntary. That's why you don't see us making too much noise. Our job is to ensure that every child goes to school. But if you choose to go to a private school, first of all, check your pocket. And if you have a few coins there, then you do so. Mombasa is uh, not doing as well, but we are focused there. We are moving with them. Uh, why these two cities is because uh, Nairobi usually has uh, close to 50,000 extra children who go to private primary schools and uh, and then they have to compete for the other public schools. Mombasa about 25 to 30,000. The others, the other flanks are doing reasonably well. I strongly believe that uh, the momentum we have created will continue and that uh, no parent would, wa would, would uh, who wants her child to remain in the private school for the next two or three years will be told that there is no vacancy there. First of all, it's, it's a business, so they can expand very quickly if they want. Are we together? So uh, I think that's what really I want to, to say today. Uh, in terms of uh, what is happening on Monday, our children who will remain in school, there are so many things to do in school. You can be in small groups, even in the, in the halls and discuss. You can go to the fields, you can play hide and seek. There are so many things you can do. And uh, for those who will be staying home for just one day, nobody has made you blind. You are carrying books. And if you like, you can also uh, stay around each other and do a lot of things. But let's leave a lot of politics out of this. But you will understand that this ministry of mine cannot rest like others. I can't say, well, let me now stop working. I would be doing a great uh, disservice to our children. So, as you see me, I think I need more encouragement than being bashed. And we will continue to do so. So you will see me until such a time that I'm handing over to Mr. or Miss X in my office. Then I can go back to my surgical clinic and continue from there. Thank you. I have a question. I have a question. Uh -huh. Special needs uh, institutions. Most kindly, madam, who are you and where do you come from? Laura Shatuba from the staff. Uh, yeah, what, what is the question again? The question is, what's the status of classroom construction in uh, special needs institutions? Well, our special needs institutions are, are special, as, as you know, and so we are paying a little bit more attention to them. You know, we usually give, uh, even under normal circumstances, an extra 50,000 shillings to them. So we are not unduly worried. Maybe you, you are worried because you have not seen me going to, to open classrooms there. But there are ways and means by which we take uh, uh, special needs and the ways and needs by which they move from one, one uh, grade to another. Those who choose to go to a, a school that is normal, like if you just need large prints, those will uh, benefit from what we are doing now. But the very serious ones, like the blind ones and others, I don't think you should worry very much because we pay a lot more attention to them. Maybe uh, what I should do now is to ensure that I take you to one of them. 